one of the things that I guess frustrates is probably the best word frustrates me more than anything else is this categorical labeling of people <clears throat> that kind of puts people in a box you know if if you have this skill set or this background or this education or this income then you're like herded cattle you're kind of pushed down that valley it's like a plinko game only with magnets that direct your path rather than bouncing from experience to experience or event to event maybe a job offer comes and they try to match your resume and this has happened to me more than once uh, dozens of times in fact in my life that I have the aptitude and the passion for a job but my resume doesn't say I've ever done it before or that I don't have a degree in that field uh, many times uh, in corporate America which I pretty much left corporate America in 2009 I've been uh, an entrepreneur and a, and a solopreneur since then with the exception of a couple of stints um, like the last couple of years that I've been working for someone else as a W2 employee uh, in broadcast media and, and along that journey there are a lot of things that I've picked up things that I've learned by necessity and, and by that I mean uh, an example might be what I'm doing right now with the, with the live video anybody can do live video and a lot of people do live video and a lot of people do it wrong and, and by wrong it, it's not a judgment call it's a matter of are there best practices are there best techniques and you know I've been working for a guy for the last couple of years who is a 25 year veteran broadcaster uh, more than half of his life he's been doing this kind of stuff he, as an executive producer as an executive director he teaches media at the local college he has won awards for the work for his media work at his church he's good at what he does I'm nowhere near as good as he is I'm not even close All right, he's also a borderline perfectionist and so sometimes he'll see the work that I've done and go well you could have done this better you could have done that better you could have done that better and I learn and go that's a good point I didn't know what I didn't know we've talked about that before right but it's so easy to get categorized that, that people look at your resume they look at your education and they go well this is what you've always done therefore this is what you'll always do let me shake that mold for you right now and say don't live in that paradigm you weren't called for that paradigm and you weren't made for that paradigm what you've done in your past is a gathering of experience it's a learning model it's an opportunity for you to become a better you for you to do something different than you've ever done before but don't let the system of this world put you into a track or a channel that says you have this education means you'll have this job because you lived in this neighborhood means you'll live in that neighborhood because you grew up here means you'll grow up there I'm looking forward to our operation care gala this year because our keynote speaker is a woman who grew up in pretty close to abject poverty and now she's a district attorney and along the way she has touched and influenced thousands of lives for the positive because she refused to stay in the mold she refused to say well you know I grew up in that neighborhood that's that's all I'll ever be and there are a lot of people who believe that the nonsense is a nice word for it nonsense hey, any more than believing that because you grew up in a wealthy neighborhood that you will always be wealthy that because your parents have great influence and affluence that you will always have great influence and affluence is simply not true now there are some other indicators as to the things that you're good at I think attitude and aptitude are the are the two top indicators of any success it's the reason I wrote the attitude hack when you understand what an attitude is what they look like how they work how you can disassemble one and put another one back together you can manage almost anything in life but there are key ingredients there are tools to building and disassembling attitudes and attitude hack will be out by the end of the month you'll have a chance to have your own copy but that technique is very very powerful and I think next to the makeup of who you are 
your traits, your natural tendencies, your, your own bent, if you will. Your attitude has the greatest level of influence. Right behind that is your aptitude. How willing are you to learn? How capable are you of learning? Do you have an IQ in that range that says, I'm constantly seeking and I want to gain more stuff, I want to know more, I want to better understand? You know, it's amazing how easy people take offense these days. I I wouldn't say I'm a thick-skinned guy because because I do still struggle personally with the approval of others. I know it's a bad thing, isn't it? I, I judge myself that way, but I'm aware of it, and that makes it a little easier to resist. But I do really like it when people like these videos. I do really like it when people share these videos. I really do like it when people comment on my videos. It, it, it means a lot to me. That's my affirmation. But I also know that the aptitude is the ability to gather outside. So because I also value my increasing IQ and my aptitude, I also look equally for constructive criticism. Now, we all know that person who, they'll say, well, your color's not straight. Or, or, or you got a piece of hair hanging down to your forehead. Or, or I see a little glit on one side of your face that's not on the other. And I'm like, okay, awesome. I'll fix that, but I really don't care. That's not the point of the video. I, I'm not a photographer. I, I'm not here to win pretty awards because I couldn't. But I'm here to challenge you and transform your life in the areas of faith, family, and freedom from a leadership perspective. If my video does that well, thumbs up. Now, I don't want to be the one who's bobbing and weaving in and out of the camera and leaning so close to the camera's out of focus and so far back you can't hear my voice. I want it to be a professional quality. So yes, I want the feedback. I want somebody to go, wow, that was really good. Or you know what? You tilted your camera down so far that people could see Phil Cook's book, but now they can't see the top of your head. Those are the kinds of things that I want to know. I like to have that kind of feedback because I want to up my game. I also know Caroline Leaf, Dr. Caroline Leaf, the neuroscientist. She says, your IQ will continue to grow as long as you continue to train your mind. You can transform your mind through the thoughts that you think, removing the toxic thoughts, building in healthy thoughts. And when you do that, you can grow your IQ i.e. aptitude, your ability to learn and to, new, to do new things, to grow yourself, to become someone else, never ceases so long as you're alive. In fact, there are studies that say that the person who continues with the mind games and the puzzles and the, like my grandmother's always doing jigsaw puzzles and crossword puzzles, she's 92. She has her days that are challenging, but for the most part, at 92, she's sharp as a tack. Still one of the greatest women I know, biggest heart in the world, loves everybody she's ever met. That's a pretty big deal, but it's about keeping the mind sharp. It's about always exercising. At my age, it's less about fighting off things like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease and more about being a greater resource for the people around me. And so for that reason, I, I never stop studying. I, I never put the books down. I, I always want to learn something else. I found this, uh, this is uh, Phil Cook's The One Big Thing, um, page 77. He says, is knowing your personality enough? I can't say enough about exploring personality profiles. It's fascinating insight that in many case, in my case, revealed, relieved me from a lot of guilt and helped me release my strengths toward my life's purpose. But is that enough? Throughout my lifetime, I've seen the trends toward different things, different ways of understanding your purpose. In the 50s and 60s, it was about a role or the point, and the point was to place people in the right position. In those days, there were tests to determine whether you'd be a good manager, a salesperson, or a teacher. My mom was a college graduate, but shortly after graduation, took a personality test that told her she'd be a good secretary. Regardless of potential or passion for anything else, she dutifully answered an ad for a secretarial job at a local used car lot and stayed there for a number of years. Now the trend is toward personality, or as some might call it, wiring. The goal is to get to the heart of your personality traits, to discover key areas such as thinking, judgment, intuition, dominance, introversion, or extroversion. 
Knowing as much as possible about your strengths and personality type is critical. But to answer your bigger question of your one thing, it's not quite enough. Your OBT, your one big thing, isn't about a role, although it will certainly influence the job, the project, the mission to which you dedicate your life. It's also not about personality, although your personality will have a huge impact on the choices you make. I hope that's a cliffhanger for you. I, I hope you find yourself going, well, then what is my one big thing? Go get the book. Okay, I'm not here to give you all of my homework. I'm here to point you in the path of doing some research that's gonna make a huge difference to you. Here's another one that I've studied. I've read this one cover to cover a couple of times. I've even coached from it. You can even see all of the markings inside the book. So much misery condensed into so little room as more than human imagination has before conceived. So enormous, so dreadful, so irremittable irredeemable did its wickedness appear that my own mind was completely made up for, for the abolition. A trade founded in inequity and carried on as this was must be abolished. Let the price be what it might, let the consequences be what they would, if from this time determined that I would never rest until I secured abolition. That was William Wilberforce, 1787. You think he found his purpose? Yeah, he was a politician, he was a spokesman, he was a soldier. But he found his purpose in a calling, something that sparked something in his heart, something that just dug away at him. I've prayed many times, God, break my heart for what breaks yours. Let me tell you what happens when you, when you pray that, and God breaks your heart. Yeah, it happens on a regular basis. You find things that, that are important to God, things that, that his heart is sensitive toward. And if you want your one big thing to be not just what you could do, but what nobody else in the world could do like you, you need to do some reading. Put Your Dream to the Test by John Maxwell. Oh, by the way, shout out to all my friends that are at IMC in Orlando this week. Congratulations. Good on you. I know a lot of you are there to audit again as part of the mentorship program, and you're going for another round. Dig deep. Dig deep, my friends. Have a good time. Tell Paul Martinelli and... Uh, Scott Fay and all those guys that said hello. And for all of those who are going for the first time, rock on. You're about to be world changers. There's only 10,000 of us. We got a lot of work to do, a lot of people to speak to, a lot of lives to influence. There's not enough of us. Don't feel like there's too much competition. We are a very small force in a very big fight fighting for the minds and the hearts of people to be influenced in a positive way. So get, get busy. We have plenty of work to do. Get busy yourself. Find your strengths. I'm a big fan of Strengths Finders. I should have dug that one off the shelf as well. Strengths Finders 2.0 uh, by Clifton. It's part of the Gallup stuff. You can even get online and find the, the reviews where they go through and they teach from a coaching perspective what each of the strengths does and how it interacts and how that strength interacts with one another uh, with the strengths within you or with the people on your team. There's some really deep study that you can do on that to grow your IQ, to better your aptitude, to sharpen your skills, and to prepare you to be the best you you can possibly be. Let me close with this. I've mentioned this before, but it, it bears repeating. I was on the first call that I ever had with John Maxwell, and it was a small enough call at the time. In fact, we thought at one point there would only be about 500 John Maxwell coaches all together, and I was among the team of the first 100, one of the founding partners. So at the time that I was on the phone call with John Maxwell, it, there was still enough people, a small enough group of people, we could each individually ask questions. I was driving to Las Vegas. I'll never forget it. I had my cell phone on. It was on the speaker phone on the dash of my excursion. My wife was in the car with me. My family was in the car with me going to compete in the world championship of public speaking with Toastmasters. And Paul Martinelli and John Maxwell had asked a very generic question. Why do you want to join the John Maxwell team? What do you hope to gain by this? How does it fit into your plan for yourself? And when it was my turn, I said, you know, I, I've always felt like my calling in life, like, like what I want to do is to be the next James Dobson, to, to speak and to write books and to impact families all over the world. And John Maxwell said, don't you dare. The world already has a James Dobson. 
The world doesn't need another James Dobson. The world needs the best J. Lauren Norris you're capable of being. Don't you dare to rob the world of that. Be the best you you can possibly be. Well, that's my admonition to you today. Get your hands on some books that are going to challenge you to be a better you, to, to build your attitude, to build your attitude, to change the dynamic of who you are. Then you will be a leader who can change the world. You will influence, not just in the role that life has given you, not staying in the same mundane life that you've been in, but doing something that makes you the best you you could possibly be. I'm Jay Lauren Norris, and you've been watching Tell It Like It Is TV. Have a blessed day. For those of you who are still here, make sure you hit that subscribe button on Facebook or YouTube. I do this every day, Monday through Friday at 6 o'clock or 6.20 a.m. Today, I'm a little early because I have to take my wife to work. So, wrapping up at 6.20 instead of starting at 6.20. But, if you like to get these videos every day and not worry about missing one when it's locked, excuse me, on the YouTube page and often on the LinkedIn page, you'll find the link for the iTunes podcast. All of these videos, every 24 hours, are recycled or cycled into and refreshed in the iTunes podcast. So in the business leadership category, find J. Lauren Norris and you'll find the iTunes podcast. There's over 300 videos just like this. I do them every day. I have for more than a year now. So there's plenty of content. You'll learn about personality. You'll learn about leadership. We talk a little bit about politics. But I hope it will always motivate and inspire you. Be sure that once you find it, you share it with as many people as you can. Influence as many lives as you can. That's what we're all here for. I appreciate you being a part of my day, and I appreciate you giving me time to be a part of yours. See you soon.